Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about meropenem. What is this drug meropenem? The suffix penem indicates that this drug belongs to the category of carbapenems. Carbapenems are one category of beta-lactam antibiotics which are having the suffix penem. We have few of the other drugs within this category such as imipenem, etapenem, doropenem. All these are carbapenems which are used as antibacterials given by IV infusion. Carbapenems are having the modified structure of penicillins with more stability. That's why these drugs are acting like broad spectrum antibacterial agents. Meropenem can be used for the different types of bacterial infections and they are effective against gram positive infections as well as gram negative bacterial infections. Among the carbapenems, meropenem is one of the widely prescribed antibacterial agent for different types of bacterial infections. Because of structural similarity, meropenem acts just like penicillins but with more stability and broad spectrum of activity. So if we see the structure of penicillins, the penicillins are having the ring structure like this. This ring system is called as penum where sulfur is included within the heterocyclic ring system. But carbapenems are having a modified structure. They are having a structure like this. Here we can observe sulfur is not present where sulfur is replaced with the carbon. Therefore, for the name of penum, we can add a prefix carba because sulfur is replaced with the carbon. So in the carbapenum, sulfur is replaced with carbon. We can observe another difference in the name of carbapenems. Here in the penum, A is there, but here in the carbapenum, E is there. This E indicates they are having unsaturation. So in the carbapenems, we can observe a unsaturation at this position. That's why they are called as penems. So carbapenems are unsaturated along with sulfur replaced with carbon. This structural modification to the penum ring system produces meropenum and other carbapenems as more resistant to degradation. So meropenum is resistant to beta-lactamases which increase the antibacterial activity of this drug. Similarly, these drugs are highly potent. They can be given at low dose to produce high antibacterial activity. Even meropenem is resistant to beta-lactamase degradation, but it can be metabolized by other types of enzymes in the bacteria. So resistance may be developed. Any enzymatic metab or drug efflux from the bacterial membrane. Even with these limitations, meropenem still proves more stable and resistant compared with penicillins. That's why this drug can be used for the treatment of skin and skin structure bacterial infections, as well as intra-abdominal infections where meropenem can be given by IV infusion route. Similarly, this drug can be used for the treatment of bacterial meningitis because of broad spectrum of activity. And interestingly, this drug can be given both in the children as well as in the adults. In the children with age greater than 3 months, meropenem can be given. So these are the various advantages of meropenem. But since it is given by IV infusion route, it is only indicated in the hospital setting where it can be used to treat the various types of bacterial infections which are somewhat resistant to penicillins. So today in this video, let us discuss how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see how this drug acts. Cell wall of bacteria is made up of two important units. One is n acetyl muramic acid and another one is n acetyl glucosamine. These two building blocks are arranged alternatively to produce each line of cell wall in the bacteria. So here muramic acid and glucosamine can be attached like this. Muramic acid is attached with a pentapeptide chain where one of the terminal peptide is removed during the cross-linking. That's why four amino acids are observed in this peptide chain. Here again, four amino acids are attached on the muramic acid. These peptides are cross-linked where one of the protein plays a key role that is the penicillin binding protein. Because of this protein, these peptide chains are cross-linked with glycine pentapeptide chain. This process is called transpeptidation which is required for cross-linking between the layers of cell wall which increases the rigidity that is required for survival of bacteria. So in the synthesis of cell wall, the last step is the transpeptidation which, which produces a cross-linking between the peptide chains. 
on muramic acid. So these units are arranged continuously to produce the cell membrane along with incorporation of penicillin binding protein and glycine residues. Now meropenem is one of the drugs which inhibits the cell wall synthesis. This drug can strongly bind to the penicillin binding protein. These penicillin binding proteins are of different type like, like PBP1, PBP2 and different types. Meropenem can bind to many of the penicillin binding proteins. Thereby it can inhibit the transpeptidation. Once it is bound to PBP, it can produce a conformational change that results in lack of transpeptidation so that crosslinking is not formed resulting in the reduced crosslink case thereby cell wall synthesis is inhibited. In this way meropenem can reduce the cell wall synthesis in the bacteria which reduces the structural rigidity leading to leaking of bacterial components out of the membrane which finally results in the sidle action on the bacteria. In this way meropenem just acts like penicillins but with more stronger affinity towards the penicillin binding protein with high potency and broad spectrum of activity. Now let us see the precautions. One of the important precautions of meropenem is that this drug may increase the seizure induction so precaution should be taken when this meropenem is given for treating the central bacterial infections. Particularly in the patients with any bacterial meningitis the risk of seizure induction may be increased with more uptake of meropenem into the CNS which may increase the seizure potential in the patients. Similarly in those patients with any renal impairment again meropenem levels are excessively increased which may again increase the seizure induction. That's why in severely renal impaired people the dose of meropenem should be reduced in order to avoid any seizure induction in the patients. Valproic acid is one of the anti-epileptic agent and divalproex is the salt of valproic acid and its acid form. So both of these drugs can be used in the treatment of seizures. Generally these two drugs can control the seizures in the patients. But when these drugs are combined with meropenem, a drug interaction exists which increases the seizure induction. Meropenem can reduce the levels of valproic acid as well as divalproex. So when their levels are reduced, their anti-epileptic activity is reduced which may increase the risk of seizure induction in the patients. That's why meropenem should not be combined with valproic acid and divalproex and if it is required other antibacterial agents should be combined with valproic acid and divalproex. Already we have discussed that meropenem is a broad spectrum antibacterial. Because of broad spectrum of activity this drug can inhibit the bacterial gut flora which is protective in nature and required to fight against pathological infections. So when this bacterial gut flora is inhibited by meropenem, it may result in the development of super infections. One of the super infections is the development of Clostridium difficile infection, which leads to the induction of diarrhea in the patients. This drug can produce one of the conditions CDAD. This is the Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. This CDAD increases with the development of Clostridium difficile infection because of intake of antibacterials like meropenem. Clostridium difficile can exist in the two forms toxin A as well as toxin B. Both of these toxins can produce one of the conditions pseudomembranous colitis where they can produce the inflammation of the colon resulting in the diarrhea which is not easily treated. And in few of the strains Clostridium difficile can also release hypertoxin. These hypertoxins can further increase the pseudomembranous colitis leading to severe diarrhea in the patients. That's why meropenem should be used at low dose possible in order to avoid any development of super infections. Another precaution is the patients with any renal impairment. In those patients meropenem can induce the thrombocytopenia leading to decreased platelet count which may increase the bleeding disorders. So in such patients again meropenem should be carefully used as it may increase hemorrhage in the patients. Similarly, meropenem can induce some neuronal impairment which may result in neuronal damage, which may result in the loss of neuronal activity and control in neuronal transmission, which may result in excessive neuronal firing leading to seizure induction. So with use of meropenem, if you have the symptoms like headache, confusion, sudden induction of seizures may be possible on long-term use because of any neuromotor impairment. Just like the penicillins, meropenem can also produce some hypersensitive reactions. 
so this drug can develop skin rashes angioedema resulting in the swelling of neck face tongue and pharynx in severe conditions it can also produce some dyspnea difficulty in breathing these are more important because many of the beta lactam antibiotics may induce hypersensitivity reactions in few group of people so if any hypersensitivity reactions are developed in the patients then meropenem should be discontinued now let us see the side effects of meropenem one of the important side effect of this drug is the nausea and vomiting that is commonly observed with many of the antibacterial agents and this drug can also produce abdominal pain and diarrhea sometimes this diarrhea is associated with development of clostridium difficile infection and in few of the patients it can also produce some constipation because of direct effect of this drug on the colon it can also produce some headache because of any neuronal impairment and hypersensitive reaction like skin rashes can also be developed which also results in the development of pruritus and itching in the patients and the important side effect is the local reaction that can be produced by meropenem since this drug is given by iv infusion it can produce the local injection site reactions so it can develop some inflammation at the site of injection otherwise it can produce some pain at the site of injection which may be observed in few of the people now let us the chemical nature of this drug so this is the structure of meropenem here we can observe the heterocyclic ring system is made up of two rings this is the azetidine and this ring system is the another heterocyclic ring system so it is a pyrrolene so meropenem is having a ring system which is a combination of azetidine and pyrrolene and the entire ring is called as carbapenem with carboxylic acid so meropenem is a carbapenem carboxylic acid derivative how it is given already we have seen that this drug is given by iv infusion it should be given by slow infusion in order to avoid any inflammation at the site of injection and the dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication for skin infections it is given at a dose of 500 mg given every 8 hours whereas for the treatment of intra abdominal infections as well as bacterial meningitis it can be given at a dose of 1 g for every 8 hours these are the adult dosages for pediatric patients the dose depends on the body weight and other conditions so that's all about this drug meropenem which is the carbapenem antibacterial agent because of lack of sulfur within the ring system this drug is not easily metabolized by beta lactamases so this drug is resistant to beta lactamase enzymes as well as this drug is highly potent and since sulfur is replaced with the carbon they are called as carbapenems with unsaturation at the second position development of diarrhea because of any super infections like clostridium difficile is one of the important precaution with this drug and meropenem should not be combined with valproic acid and divalproex as this drug reduces the levels of both of these antiepileptics seizure induction is another important precaution with use of meropenem particularly in the patients with any bacterial meningitis or any renal impairment hypersensitive reactions may also be developed because of meropenem which should be closely so that's all about this drug meropenem hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video